Hey everybody, this is Derek from Kelly Mountain Woodworks. I just wanted to give you a brief description of what this video is about. Uh, I'm going to be doing more of an in-depth video this time, going into greater detail on how I do these epoxy inlays of these animals. I was asked to do these two for awards for the Washington County Fair upcoming in a couple weeks. So I just finished them up and thought I would uh, give a brief intro to this video. Hope you enjoy the video. I started off just cutting up some four quarter rough stock into sections about 18 inches long. After that I went over to the joiner where I jointed one face and one edge so that I have perfect square corner to work off of. Next we go over to the planer where you put your jointed face down and plane the top of the board down flat so that it is perfectly parallel to the bottom face. After that we go over to the table saw where we cut it up into strips. After you've got all your strips cut, you can start applying the glue. I don't have a fancy silicone roller, so I just use my finger. You just want to make sure you get a nice even coat. After the glue is dry, you want to take it over to the miter saw so you can square up both your ends. I just used a scrap piece of quarter inch plywood to make a stencil on my scroll saw so that I could transfer it to the cutting board. I just found the center line of the cow and the center line of the cutting board and made a match and then just made sure that it looked good to the eye before I started tracing it out. I used a handheld router with a small straight bit and went around the outline that I drew with the stencil and then switched to a half inch straight bit to remove the majority of the material in the middle. Gave it a quick sand in to clean it up and get it ready for the epoxy. After making sure I've got equal parts of part A and part B, I make sure that it's mixed up really well before I add any color.
to get the color I was looking for, I used a little bit of metallic copper, acrylic paint, red chalk, and black diamond pigments mahogany to darken it up a bit. After you pour the epoxy, you want to make sure you heat it up with a heat gun to pop any of the air bubbles that will rise to the surface. Wait about an hour and then do it again. After the epoxy is fully cured, you can run it through the planer to get a flat, even surface. Since this is an award, I used some stickers to make a stencil for the name of the award and then I burned it into the back of the board with a heat gun and some ammonium chloride. The cove bit messed up on me when I was cutting the finger grooves so I ended up having to use a straight bit and cut them a little bit deeper than I normally would have but it turned out pretty nice. I used a half inch round nose to cut a juice groove all the way around the outside of the board. I used a 3 16 round over on all the bottom edges just to ease the edges a little bit. I put a small chamfer on all the top edges. I didn't film the entire sanding process because sanding is boring, but I started off with 80 grit, then I went to 120, 180, and finished off with 220 in the random orbit sander. After finishing up with the random orbit sander, I hand sanded at 600, 1200, and 2000. Using a 
guide so that all the rubber feet have the proper spacing from the edge. I put a little bit of butcher block conditioner over the holes just to make sure that all the wood is conditioned even under the little rubber feet.